in the short term, the European Union has a plan or they're discussing a plan by all accounts. And uh, here to explain exactly what that plan is, uh, Lorcan Allen is the business editor with the Business Post. Uh, Lorcan, I know you've been writing about this, you in particular, uh, in the paper. So what is on the table? What are they considering European Commission level? They've looked at a number of options, Kieran. I suppose what the EU is trying to do is coordinate the response right across Europe because you have different governments taking different approaches to the energy security and the price. Uh, so the European Union issued a draft paper. Well, they haven't issued it. We, um, it's been issued to energy ministers ahead of a meeting this week. And there's, I suppose, three options that the EU is looking at. The first thing is about how to control the price. So the price of electricity in Europe is set by gas. And gas, as we know, the price of it has gone uh, extremely high and volatile over the last year since the, the invasion began. Um, but if you take a wind farm in the west of Ireland or Money Point, uh, Money Point Power Station down in County Clare, which is coal fired, the cost of producing electricity from those generation assets is actually much lower than the price of gas today. A renewable energy in Ireland is typically priced at about 70 euros per megawatt hour. The gas price is at about 400 euros per megawatt hour. So there's a huge variability oh, there. Wow. Yeah. So what the European Union is saying is this inframarginal producers, those are known as um, wind farms, nuclear reactors and coal fire power plants. So it's proposing that governments take the excess revenue that those companies make from selling their profits into wholesale markets. Um, so that's the difference between the 400 euro per megawatt hour and the, their cost of production, shall we say. Then they're telling governments that's one side of it on the price. Then they're to use that money that they take from uh, from energy companies yeah. uh, and use that to incentivize consumers and businesses to reduce electricity consumption. Uh, for businesses, uh, they're saying that businesses need to put in a tender and say exactly how much it would cost them to reduce consumption of electricity, particularly around the peak times of consumption between five o'clock in the evening and seven, what that would mean for the business. And then they would compensate them. And they're also proposing that governments design a sort of voucher system to reward consumers for also taking measures in their own home to reduce electricity consumption. Um, now, what's interesting about these proposals is that they would supersede the so-called windfall tax that we've heard a lot about that the Irish government is uh, is looking at at the minute. Yeah. Uh, the EU is saying that this is the way to go. We think it's the best option. Um, and, and they want European governments to, I suppose, coordinate in a, in, a, in a joined up manner. OK, so these energy companies making an absolute ton of money off their electricity because it's linked to the gas price. They say, take some of that money from those companies and then use it to incentivize people to make the right energy decisions. Essentially, put a bit of money back in their pockets. I mean, it sounds very simple. It strikes me as unbelievably complicated to coordinate that. But a voucher system to individual citizens, all God knows how many hundreds of millions across the European Union. It's extremely complicated, Karen. And like electricity markets are not simple things. I mean, uh, there are companies out there making a lot of profits from uh, high energy prices, but then a lot of those are companies that generate their own electricity. But companies that only trade electricity are really probably struggling. You've seen a lot of businesses in the UK go out of business uh, because they were um, they were traders of electricity. They didn't actually ma- manufacture their own electricity or produce it. Um, so I suppose what the EU is trying to do is, is get that coordination. Interestingly, what they're saying, the voucher system that you would incentivize consumers would be to invest, to use the vouchers for energy efficiency things in their home, be it retrofitting appliances that are less uh, energy consumption. That would be what, what what they want to see people. Because um, I was at an event last night. Bernard Looney, who's the he's an Irishman, he's the CEO of BP, one of the largest oil and gas companies in the world. He was asked at the event, "What's his view on this current crisis?" And he says, "This is not a one winter show. Mm. We're looking at multi year." very high energy prices in Europe given where he's and he has a better visibility in the market Gosh, than anybody right. else. Right, well that's kind of frightening to hear and I think a lot of people would be terrified at the thought that this is a kind of a medium term thing and possibly longer. I would wager, Lorcan, though lots of those ministers, those uh, uh, energy ministers from across the European Union are going to go to this meeting and they're all going to say a ver- different version of the same thing which is, yeah, that's great, let's take all that money from those companies but we're not mad about this voucher system we just want to give the money let's just give cash cold hard cash straight into people's pockets to subsidise their electricity bills Yeah and I think a lot of the ministers will have seen what happened during Covid as well and the way they were able to get 
cash directly supports the businesses and, and consumers very quickly at a time of crisis. We're almost back at a COVID setting again here where it's speed is better than perfection and just get, uh, you know, supports the businesses. I mean, we, we're seeing already the, the sort of bills that are coming in for businesses. Um, there was a lot of talk last week about the, the companies putting up the energy prices. That's only the start of it. Uh, if you look at wholesale energy markets, there's probably more spikes in consumer bills to come yet. Lorcan, listen, thanks a million for talking us through that. Lorcan Adams, the business editor with the Business uh, Post. Someone has texted in, I'm wondering when it comes to electricity prices, why we're being told green energy is sourced from 100% renewable sources, but there's very little difference in unit prices. I didn't think the war in Ukraine was affecting our wind energy. I think uh, Lorcan just explained exactly uh, why it's the coupling uh, of electricity prices with gas prices.